I'm making this video because it could be the last video I make. This is Princess Latifa Al Maktoum, daughter of the billionaire ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed. She hasn't been seen since early March. And if you are watching this video, it's not such a good thing. Either I'm dead or I'm in a very, very, very bad situation. Friends of the princess released this video, filmed before her disappearance, to try to put pressure on the UAE authorities. They say she was snatched from this yacht by Emirati special forces off the coast of India as she tried to make an extraordinary escape from her father and the city-state he rules. All my father cares about is his reputation. My vision is to Dubai to be number one. Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum cultivates an image of Dubai as a modern city, an outward-looking, business-friendly destination, a place of leisure and of luxury. Princess Latifa's regular skydives, wrapped in her country's flag, made her seem the perfect ambassador. But a friend told us, in reality, she was a prisoner in a gilded cage. Latifa wanted to have a life, I would say. She wanted a chance to have freedom. Um, she had tried to escape before in uh, 2002, and then she was thrown into a prison where she spent nearly three and a half years. Last summer, she made contact with a former officer in France's Foreign Intelligence Service. Years earlier, Disguised in a black abaya, Hervé Jolbert claims to have fled Dubai himself after a business deal went sour and he was accused of embezzlement. It's a story he dramatised in this short video clip. Initially she was going to do it the same way I did it in Dubai, with the uh, Navy SEAL uh, rebreather, you know, the breathing equipment, uh, underwater torpedo. I said, OK, I have to train you for, to do that. Uh, so she bought the equipment, uh, you know, $20,000, $30,000. In the end, the princess decided against the torpedo. Instead, together with her friend Tina Yauhiainen, a Finnish martial arts instructor, she drove across the border to Amman. There, they say the pair were picked up by dinghy and taken to a yacht waiting in international waters. On board the Nostromo was Hervé Jobert, the former French spy, they set sail for India. An Interpol red notice issued in March at the UAE's request partially confirms their story. But the warrant alleges that instead of escaping of her own free will, Princess Latifa was kidnapped. It's from here that the story becomes harder to verify. The Nostromo's public tracking system was switched off, presumably in an effort to avoid detection. But we've been given the data from the yacht's satellite communication system, which does indeed show the Nostromo heading southeast towards India. And then, when it arrives off the coast of Goa, the tracker suddenly goes dark. As the Nostromo sailed eastwards, Hervé says he noticed other boats following them for several days. Then, one evening, it was the 4th of March, when he was on the bridge, and Princess Latifa was below deck in her cabin with Tina. We started hearing uh, noises. It sounded like uh, gunshots from upstairs. And actually later on, I learned there were stun grenades. I was outside looking, I knew something was going on. And then I saw that boat coming and uh, with the commando. Uh, they pointed the gun at us. And with guys, uh, you know, with the mean, mean on their face that they were, they're going to they're going to kill you. We locked uh, ourselves to the bathroom and we're hugging each other. Um, but she was thinking, oh, somebody's here to get me. We came out from the bathroom and the room was filled with smoke. At the top of the stairs, um, I was pushed to the floor and my hands were tied behind my back. What about Latifa? I heard her. I did not see her. I heard her struggling and screaming at, at, at them. 
Uh, I heard that, that she did not want to go, uh, leave me on the boat. Uh, I'd rather die here than go back to, to the UAE. And, uh, you know, shuffling and struggling through the stairs. And five minutes later, I heard a helicopter and uh, we were gone. But there's a twist. Both Hervé and Tina told us that these conversations were happening in English, not Arabic. The commandos who first boarded the Nostromo, they say, were not Emirati, but Indian. Uh, at the time, I was not sure if they were Indian, yeah, because they were speaking English. Uh, but I knew after, when I saw the marking on the hull. What did the marking say? Indian Coast Guard. I heard one say, come on, Latifa, let's go home. In English? In English. And she says she's screaming, uh, I can hear her, she's screaming, that she wants... Uh, she wants to claim political asylum. The Indian government didn't respond to our requests for a comment. With the princess gone, the Nostromo set sail for Dubai. Hervé and Tina were still aboard, but now the yacht was under the control of Emirati forces. Once ashore, they say, they were blindfolded, handcuffed and interrogated. They were threatening me with a death penalty, um, a life in prison, they told me that you have stabbed the ruler of Dubai in the back. Um, you're not supposed to be helping uh, someone to escape. Did you believe them? Did you think you might get the death penalty? At that point, yes, I, I, I was very scared. Um, the most terrifying moment of that... Um... Tina and Hervé say they were released after more than a week in detention. The case of the vanished princess has been taken up by an advocacy group known as Detained in Dubai. The group is not without controversy. Two of its members have criminal convictions in the UAE, convictions they contest. At a press conference in a central London hotel, some journalists appeared to question the group's motives behind publicising the story. We heard that you are getting support from the Qatari government. <laughs> I, 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 perhaps, I can, perhaps I can answer that question. I, I can confirm categorically uh, that we are not receiving any support from, from the Qatari government or any other government. The UAE broke off relations with Qatar last summer, part of a wider regional rivalry between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Could Princess Latifa have become a pawn in big power politics? The government of Dubai told us that, for legal reasons, they were unable to comment on the details of the allegations, but they said that those making them had a track record of criminal activity. Now, the AFP news agency quoted another government source as saying that Latifa was back with her family and that this whole story was part of a Qatari campaign to discredit the ruler of Dubai, Latifa's father, Sheikh Mohammed. And what of the mysterious French spy who masterminded the escape and who also had his own run-in with the authorities in the UAE? Can I ask just what was in it for you? You were, you were expecting to get paid. Yeah, eventually I was, going, I was expecting to get paid, yeah. How much? Is it important? Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it gives a, a wrong impression. Why? Uh, because then, then people are going to tell me that I did it for the money. Did you do it for the money? No. I expect it to be the start of a new chapter in my life and one where I have some voice where I don't have to be silenced. And but since her disappearance, nothing has been heard from Latifa, nor has she been seen in public. If I don't make it out, I really hope that some positive change will happen from all of this.